Hey guys, this presentation is on panic disorder, the diagnosis, history, exam, investigations, and treatment. This is usually how a, pre a case presentation would start off with for panic disorder. A 28-year-old woman has presented with a 15-minute episode of chest pain, dizziness, and breathlessness. She has had two similar episodes in the past four months. Medical investigations performed at the hospital have excluded a cardiac pathology. Discuss your approach to further assessment, possible diagnoses and measurement options. In terms of differentials, my provisional diagnosis would be a panic disorder. As this usually affects teens to early 20s, and women are twice as likely to, to experience it. My differentials can be divided into other anxiety disorders such as illness anxiety disorder, agoraphobia, specific phobia, social anxiety disorder, and substance use disorder, somatic symptom disorder, substance abuse or withdrawal, medical conditions such as hypothyroidism or menopause, and psychiatric disease such as phobias or OCD. According to the DSM-5 criteria for panic disorder, the patient needs to be experiencing recurrent unexpected panic attacks. And a panic attack is a sudden attack of fear or anxiety in situations which most people would not find frightening. They would have palpitations, sweating, chest pain or discomfort, nausea, abdominal pain, fear of losing control or dying. It's followed by more than one month of heightened concern about having another panic attack. There would be a significant change in their behaviour as a consequence of their attacks. For example, they would avoid situations which they think would start a panic attack and searching for safety. Panic attacks cannot be attributed to substance abuse or withdrawal, other medical conditions like hypothyroidism or menopause, and other psychiatric diseases like phobias or OCD. I'm just going to go through the other differentials in terms of the other anxiety disorders, one being an illness anxiety disorder. And this is when patients are preoccupied and fearful of having or acquiring a serious disorder for more than six months, despite reassurance after a thorough medical evaluation. Agoraphobia is similar to panic disorder, however, they expect um, the panic panic attacks. So these patients would avoid being in a place where panic attacks can occur and it occurs when panic sensations are expected as opposed to a panic disorder where the panic attacks are totally unexpected and then result in the fear afterwards. A specific phobia is an excessive or unrealistic fear of objects or situations. Social anxiety disorder is a fear of being embarrassed and negatively evaluated by others. Substance-induced anxiety disorder occurs with substance use or withdrawal. Somatic symptom disorders. Somatic symptoms which cause distress in the individual. For example, the patient has abdominal pain and the patient persistently thinks about the seriousness of the symptoms. They always have anxiety about their own health and a lot of time and energy is devoted to these symptoms. Other differentials for panic disorder include substance abuse and withdrawal, medical conditions like hyperthyroidism, menopause, psychiatric diseases like phobias and OCD. In terms of a history from this patient, you want to do a mental state exam, looking at their appearance, behavior, speech, mood, effect, TF, TC, perception, cognition, insight and judgment, and then do a full psychiatric interview, looking at the symptoms related to their panic attacks and use the DSM-5 criteria, as I said earlier, in order to diagnose with panic disorder. Assess for risk factors for panic disorder, do a risk assessment, which is important for any psychiatric interview, and also ask about drugs, alcohol, and other socio psychosocial factors. So a full psychiatric interview. The DSM-5 is that they must have an unexpected panic attack, followed by one month of worry or rumination over the attack and its consequences, and may develop maladaptive behaviours to deal with, with the treatment of attacks. In terms of risk factors for panic disorder, we have family history and a personal history of mental illnesses, a risk assessment, exclude differential, psychosis, mood disorder, again, drugs, alcohol, and psychosocial. After doing the history and examination, we must devise a formulation for the patient's disease, assessing the presence of predisposing, precipitating, perpetuating, and protective factors. In terms of investigations, we want to screen for organic causes by doing a urine toxicology screen, thyroid function tests, and blood sugar levels.
In terms of management, you want to use a multidisciplinary team and biopsychosocial model in order to treat these patients. And MAT treatments can be divided into non-pharmacological and pharmacological. For these patients, a lot of the treatment first line would be you trying the non-pharmacological treatments such as psychoeducation, psychological treatments like cognitive behavioral therapy and graduated exposure, general day-to-day -day measures such as slow breathing techniques, relaxation training, guided imagery, and physical exercise. And pharmacologicals include SSRIs and benzodiazepines if they're undergoing an acute panic attack to calm them down, but not for the long term. So psychoeducation. This is very important, and it's very important to teach the patient and their family about the, about the diagnosis of panic disorder and counsel them about what the symptoms are, what they would expect from treatment, and let them know that there is a lot of help available to them. In terms of cognitive behavioural therapy and graded exposure for panic disorder, this is a first-line treatment for these patients, and it's quite effective. CPT uses the ABC model, where it looks at the action, behaviour, and the resulting consequence, and then it tries to change the thoughts for the patient, to have more thoughts like these, such as, I've had panic attacks before and I'm still alive. I can manage with slow breathing techniques. You also want to try and use some graded exposure to help them overcome their panic disorder by placing the patient in a situation where they can't fully escape and sufficiently making them uncomfortable. It allows them to try and use the several techniques, like slow breathing techniques, so that they can learn the skills of how to use these techniques if they come across the situation in reality. Next, you also have introceptive exposure. A lot of these patients don't actually know when a panic attack is going to come on. And often these patients have tachycardia and dyspnea and they don't realize that they do. So you can train them to be less frightened of the symptoms of panic by just asking them to jog on the spot in the office and let them feel what it feels like when their heart starts racing and when they feel short of breath. And whenever they feel that, they should know that they have a panic disorder coming on and they should think about having slow breathing techniques. The next one is in vivo exposure. So you want to break down feared situation into small achievable steps. For example, if the individual is scared taking a train, the in vivo exposure might involve Taking the patient to the station, step one, small step, buying a ticket, next small step, boarding the train, and finally, taking the train successfully. Other day-to-day -day measures which are, can be incorporated into CBD is slow breathing techniques, relaxation training such as yoga, meditation, tai chi, guided imagery such as doing feared exercises in our minds and imagining what it would be like, and physical exercise. Long-term pharmacological treatments, SSRIs is first lines. Don't use ben benzodiazepines. That is reserved for when the patients have an acute panic attack. When a patient has acute panic attack, first provide reassurance. Tell them that they're not going to die and that they've had panic attacks before and they've survived it, so they can do it this time as well. Ask them to use slow breathing techniques and give some short-acting benzodiazepines. It's very addictive and very short acting, and that's why you don't want to give it long term. Thank you very much for watching this presentation, and I hope it was useful.